Hello guys, it's Revolution. On this video we're going to discuss Super Saiyan God and discuss the mystery around how the Super Saiyan God ritual works in comparison to post-battle of God's Super Saiyan God, otherwise known as Stacked Super Saiyan God. Now, there's a lot of mystery as to how exactly the Super Saiyan God ritual works and how exactly it elevated Goku to a completely new plane of power. But looking back through the course of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, there may actually be clues as to exactly how this power works and they can work in tandem with the hints on God Key that we received in Dragon Ball Super itself. Now, Dragon Ball Super wasn't known for its in-depth storytelling. It was rather vague most of the time, but the plot elements are there. Unfortunately, you generally have to search for them. But by collating all the information from all the official sources within the franchise concerning Super Saiyan God in God Key and a little bit of theory making, we may be a step closer to solving the riddle of the mystery of Super Saiyan God. But as usual, before we begin, a quick question. What is your favorite transformation in the Dragon Ball franchise? Is it Super Saiyan 1, 2 or 3? Super Saiyan 4 from Dragon Ball GT? Or the God transformations, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Blue, or even Ultra Instinct? Or maybe it's Uzaru. Let me know down in the comments section and your reasons why. Also, just past 15,000 subscribers on Revolution. I'm truly grateful for all your continued support. If you're not subscribed or new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. With the highly anticipated return of Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Ball Super likely on the horizon, I ensure you you'll find some of the most diverse, in-depth conversations concerning Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Super. Hit that subscribe button and the bell button next to it to be notified whenever I drop new content. So Beerus' prophetic dream about the Super Saiyan God was essentially the catalyst for every event that transpired through Dragon Ball Super. And of course, the Super Saiyan God transformation for Goku represented such an amazing power up. He was leagues upon leagues of power above what he previously was as a Super Saiyan 3 in Dragon Ball Z. The catalyst for this incredible power-up was God Key, something that had never been introduced until the Battle of God Saga. Obviously with Beerus being the God of Destruction, he wields God Key and Hakai energy, but we had seen gods in the Dragon Ball franchise before. In fact, Kami was the God of Earth, and given that Dende can somewhat sense God Key, and of course there's King Kai, the North Cardinal Kai, who runs over a galactic quadrant and then of course there's the Grand Kai who looks over all the Cardinal Kais and then of course there's the Supreme Kai yet none of them had ever mentioned anything like God Key especially when you consider that they were in the face of danger with Majin Buu you would have thought that they would have tried to teach either Gohan or Goku God Key but they didn't. Maybe, just maybe, these gods all thought you could only access God Key if you were either a natural born god or an appointed god. But upon getting absolutely slapped by Beerus on King Kai's planet as a Super Saiyan 3 and admitting that even fusion wouldn't stand a chance against Beerus, Goku had no choice but to summon Shenron and ask him to summon the Super Saiyan God himself. Of course, Shenron would tell Goku how to achieve the Super Saiyan God status. Now, Toriyama did give us an interview a few years after the inception of Super Saiyan God regarding the origins of the Super Saiyan God transformation, and this is what he said. Long ago, a righteous-hearted Saiyan named Yamushi fought against the other Saiyans with five comrades. He was cornered and became a Super Saiyan, but was eventually defeated by overwhelming odds. Afterwards, his soul wandered in search of six righteous-hearted Saiyans, hence Super Saiyan God. Beerus sensed Yamushi's spirit in his prophetic dream, and long ago, a Namekian elder likewise emphasized with his spirit, and so wrote about him in the Namekian Book of Legends, which is how Shenlong knew about Super Saiyan God. And obviously, Shenlong would tell Goku and the gang what exactly they would need to do to achieve the Super Saiyan God status. This is literally what he said. When five Saiyans with righteous hearts join hands and pour their spirits into another righteous Saiyan, a Super Saiyan God is born. Now, upon first hearing this, just as the Saiyans did in the show itself, you would think that this is basically everyone pouring their energy into Goku so he could elevate his power. We've seen this before in the Dragon Ball Z movie. We saw Goku utilize this kind of power up against Broly in Dragon Ball Z, the legendary Super Saiyan. We even saw something similar in Dragon Ball GT when all the Super Saiyans gave Super Saiyan 4 Goku their energy or powered up around him to ultimately power up Super Saiyan 4 Goku. However, this isn't quite the case because the gang literally tried a similar thing to this where they gave Goku his energy, but it didn't work. However, one thing that must be noted is Gohan literally stated that at this point Super Saiyan Goku 
had more power than it ever had before. So what that says is that when you power scale Super Saiyan God Goku over the end of Z Super Saiyan 3 Goku, you have to take this part into account. Now Gohan did know what Goku's power as a Super Saiyan 3 was in the Buu Saga. He felt his power from the Supreme World of the Kai's when Goku first used Super Saiyan 3 against Majin Buu. He also saw Super Saiyan 3 in action against Buu Tanks where Goku was literally just running away. He understood how powerful Goku was as a Super Saiyan 3, yet here he is saying Super Saiyan Goku is more powerful than ever. So this would mean that Goku at least got eight times or more stronger than what he was before they lent him his energy. In fact, lent him his energy is the wrong word. They poured their energy into him. Regardless, it wasn't quite Super Saiyan God. And of course, that kind of power wouldn't have put him on par with even a fusion, which Goku stated would not work against Beerus. So if you're looking at the power scaling side of things, if you were to say that Goku was galaxy level, and that's a big if, as a Super Saiyan 3 at the end of Z. Well, he got eight times stronger here before he underwent the Super Saiyan God ritual, so you have to take that into account. But Whis pointed out that they got it wrong and said that they needed to pour their hearts and souls into him and not their energy. They did so, and of course, when they do so, you actually see that blue aura pouring into Goku. Very similar looking to actually Super Saiyan Ray's Trunks transformation, golden Super Saiyan key surrounding the blue energy which has led a lot of people to say that Super Saiyan Rage was a false Super Saiyan Blue because of the blue key of Super Saiyan Blue, but it also looked like it could be very similar to Genki, which would make sense, I guess, considering Trunks literally pulled the Genki sword out of his ass. But that's a mystery for another day. Upon the Super Saiyan God ritual working and becoming a Super Saiyan God, it elevated Goku to a completely new plane of power. Now, this power up has often been described as astronomical, but astronomical units are really just a distance and it's kind of hyperbole at best. That doesn't mean it isn't a massive power up though. After all, Super Saiyan God Goku's fist clashes with Beerus were about to destroy the Universe 7 macrocosm in three blows, and it's generally around the size of three universes itself. Being it a shared feat, that would give Goku half a universal of destructive capacity per punch. But as I mentioned in the video before, destructive capacity doesn't grow linearly with power level increases, it actually grows exponentially. So when scaling Dragon Ball, you have to be a bit careful as to how you use destructive capacity feats. Now upon seeing the Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods movie, you'll be forgiven for thinking that God Key was a completely different pool of power from his regular key. However, in Dragon Ball Super, it became quite clear that that was not the case. Eventually, the Super Saiyan God's power would eventually run out against Beerus. However, he would retain the power of the Super Saiyan God in his normal Super Saiyan state and then eventually in his base form. Now, I know there's still a bit of an argument going on as to whether he retained that power in his base or in his Super Saiyan state. Whilst I will admit there are some shady moments in Dragon Ball Super and certainly arguments against him absorbing it into base due to him destroying Beerus' attack that he failed to do so moments before as a Super Saiyan, even if you don't want to say he did it in his base, by the time it got around to Resurrection of F, when him and Vegeta were training in bases before entering Whis's staff, Beerus says that they are now stronger than ever and do they want to fight him? Of course, they said no because they still knew, despite the ability to stack transformations, that they still didn't stand a chance against Beerus. So ultimately, the way Goku retained the power after Super Saiyan God faded during his battle against Beerus, I kind of like to look at it as muscle memory. Now, of course, it wasn't quite muscle memory because we're talking about Ki here, which is a fictional concept, at least in the manner that is employed in Dragon Ball. But because his body felt the power from being a Super Saiyan God, it managed to retain that power. And now don't get this twisted, he did not retain the God Ki which ultimately turns his hair red. But he did retain the power. Of course, for Vegeta, Vegeta had to go to Beerus' planet and train for six to eight months, where he would gain enough power to be a match for Goku, if not stronger. But ultimately, they wouldn't fully learn to control Goki until they went into Whis's staff and learned to move inside the atmosphere inside Whis's staff. It would be during this time that they would fully learn to utilize Super Saiyan Blue, which of course is a transformation that uses God Key. Super Saiyan Blue is essentially a hybrid transformation that uses Super Saiyan God, a key transformation, and stacks the Super Saiyan transformation on top. That's why it's called Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, a Super Saiyan God turning Super Saiyan. Just before entering Whis's staff in episode 19 of Dragon Ball Super though, Goku and Vegeta did somewhat come across the idea of Super Saiyan Blue while sparring, and this is the advice Whis gave in order for them to achieve godly key. He said, the energy you've built up is seeping out. You need to keep the energy inside your body so your opponent doesn't sense it. Whilst in Whis's staff, upon not being able to move in the godly atmosphere inside Whis's staff, 
But you need to realize that if you increase your energy and control it, then you maintain enough power to be able to move in this high pressure godlike atmosphere. So rather than being a completely different pool of energy like many people assumed after watching the Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods movie, God Key seems to be more reserving your regular key and pulling it inside your body and not letting it seep out. Raising your power to the maximum but maintaining key control, that allows you to access God Key. So I guess you could say that God Key is ultimately a higher utilization of your regular key. It's because of this pure key control that it allows Goku to use the Kaioken stacked on top of Super Saiyan Blue. As he states in episode 39, whilst using the blue Kaioken technique for the first time against the legendary assassin Hit, Goku states that it's because Super Saiyan Blue is a combination of strength and a calm mind with proper key control. So essentially, it's keeping all of your key within the spatial confines of your body. And the ability to compress your key within your body allows you to access a completely new plane of power. Now here's the kicker and the main point of this video. Compressing your key into a small space in Dragon Ball has always led to a surge of power to the user in question's power level. Elevating the user in power's concentrated compressed key to ascend beyond the user's actual power level. We can go right back to the beginning of Dragon Ball Z for this. In the Raditz saga, in the battle between Piccolo and Goku vs Raditz, Piccolo had a power level of 408 after he took his weights off and Goku had a power level of 416 once he took his weights off. Weighted clothing that is. But upon using the Super Kamehameha, Goku focusing all his energy into a point or an area of space, Goku's power elevated to 924, way beyond his actual power level. Raditz commenting, somehow he can focus all his energy into a single point. That led to a massive increase in power for Goku. But at the same time, Piccolo was readying the special beam cannon. And despite being initially weaker than Goku with a power level of 408, his power by focusing all the energy into a compressed area in his fingertips rose his power to 1330. That's more than a three times increase over his actual power level. And Raditz once again commented and all focused in his fingertips. We see this time and time again throughout Dragon Ball. Users using special techniques that amp their power beyond their actual power level. For example, Vegeta has the final flash and the final explosion, as we saw against Cell and Majin Buu. He would have killed them had they not had regenerative abilities, despite being weaker than them on both occasions. And then, of course, there was Goku in the Cell games. As a Super Saiyan, he conceded against Perfect Cell, but his instant Kamehameha literally blew Cell's whole top half of his body off. This is because his Kamehameha elevated his power to beyond what his actual power level is because it was concentrating key into a small point. It's basically just regular key focused, compressed, concentrated into a small area. So what I propose to you is what if God Key is simply just all of Goku's Super Saiyan 3 power at his maximum compressed into the spatial confines of his body which elevates his power way beyond what he can currently use without it being compressed. So whilst those power amping moves such as the Kamehameha, the Special Beam Cannon and the Final Flash are attacking techniques, where the power of that technique ultimately becomes an extrinsic separate part of your power, whereas the process of confining all your energy, all your key into the spatial confinement of your body allows for that same amping process causing an astronomical elevation of power that is ultimately intrinsic to your power ultimately making the body of the Super Saiyan God a weapon in itself, allowing for godlike techniques and consummate key control. After all, Nagamini, the producer for the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, when talking about the difference between Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan Blue, he of course concurred that the power of Super Saiyan Blue was much stronger than that of Super Saiyan God in terms of raw power, but Super Saiyan God is all about godly techniques rather than power and relying and predicting the opponent's movements key control. Of course, Super Saiyan Blue still has that element, but it becomes more about sheer force. So going back to the Super Saiyan God ritual and of course stacked Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan God ritual relied on five other righteous Saiyans, Super Saiyans pouring their hearts and souls into another righteous Saiyan, which I guess you could express as a meaning of love and love is said to be binding. So what if that ritual's magic, I guess you could say, was to bind Goku's power within himself in order to create God Key, which ultimately led to Super Saiyan God. Of course, that's the theoretical take it with a pinch of salt, but it's certainly a model that could make sense, whereas stacked Super Saiyan God 
is the learned way of achieving Super Saiyan God by learning how to utilize God Key through training from an angel attendant by compressing your regular key into the confines of your body. So it's quite possible that Super Saiyan God isn't necessarily a power level increase in the traditional sense, but in fact it's a technique that allows him to manifest his current key into something greater, something higher. And just for the record, I'm not saying it doesn't actually involve a power level increase in the traditional sense either. It could do, I'm simply theorizing. Of course, the two Saiyans, Goku and Vegeta, who possess the God transformation, Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan Blue, they did achieve it in two different ways. It wouldn't be right to say that Goku didn't learn how to access God Key himself, but he certainly had a gifted head start by undergoing the Super Saiyan God ritual, and of course, his body imprinting on his Super Saiyan God experience, which allowed his natural power to be at that level, whereas Vegeta simply had to train for it. And as Goku stated in episode 27, Vegeta simply did this by himself. But I think it's fair to say there's certainly more to Super Saiyan God than being a simple power up. The foundations in the pre existing lore of the Dragon Ball verse are certainly there, as I pointed out with the key amplification techniques in the Raditz saga and beyond. Ultimately, until we get a Dragon Ball Super Guidebook that gives us full analysis of what Super Saiyan God is, Super Saiyan God will always remain a mystery. But despite the information regarding Super Saiyan God and God Key, being sporadically placed around the Dragon Ball Super anime as well as other wider sources from the franchise itself. You can piece them together to get somewhat of an idea of what it is and I think we are moving steps closer to what the mystery of Super Saiyan God actually is. Anyway guys, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. I'm really looking forward to seeing your thoughts on this. If you enjoy my content, please do smash a like on the video. Lend me your energy. Every like truly helps this channel and I appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Until next time, Ad Astra.